These types of videos that talk about Minecraft normally start with an interesting anecdote about when said person played the game and then it cuts to the soundtrack. And to be fair, it works. So I think I'll do the same thing. It really is beautiful how pure of an emotion C418 can bring out for thousands of people, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Hi, my name is RQ or Jackson, depending on who you ask, and I'm a game designer amongst many other things, and I can't wait for you to take this trip with me. So let's get started. For the uninformed about Minecraft, well, I'll be honest, I have no clue how you ended up here, and how you've gotten this far without knowing about this genre-defining game, but regardless, Minecraft was developed by a Swedish man named Marcus Persson, or Notch. Yep, that's it. Just him. Of course, a team was eventually formed for his blossoming company, Mojang, that would continue to work on Minecraft. The game was released in 2009 and made a full release in 2011, and somewhere between those years, a spark ignited, and a gaming powder keg was ready to explode. Now that's all I'll really talk about history-wise until later when we talk about the not-so-big soft boy, for sake of that not really being the focus of the video, and there are many other creators who have done histories of Minecraft far better than I'm really willing to commit to. Minecraft is possibly one of the most simplistic video games while also managing to be so utterly complex that it is hard to tell if it is poisoning the game or giving it an antidote. The game is incredibly easy to roll into and fall in love with, if you already play games and understand them. This doesn't mean that you can't love the game without having more previous knowledge, but usually you have someone helping you or have watched content based on the game that pushes you into the right direction. I say this because when designing games, there is a level of self-awareness to non-gamers that should be taken care of, and lots of companies and designers struggle with this concept. Indie developers in particular, though, struggle with this, usually due to the fact that if the consumer is playing an indie game, they probably are already involved in gaming, just how the market is. Minecraft has next to no systems in place to teach its players other than a small text box that says press E to open inventory. I can talk more about that aspect of game design, but I think that is for another video, and there's actually a whole video series that Rasputin has made, and it's amazing and I highly recommend watching it after you finish this. Link in the deets. Tangent aside, there is a level of welcoming emptiness and untapped potential that you are bound to experience when you hit a new world. Minecraft gives no boundaries and sets no expectations, but let's talk about systems. See, what's strange with Minecraft is that at its core there's about three things you do, build, mine, and craft. Within this basic overview, there's a much bigger game where you are knowledgeable on crafting recipes, something sort of solved by the use of the crafting book, along with building techniques and proper mining levels, potions, enchanting, ender dragon, finding and fighting, elytra, wither, beacons, and oh man, there is just so much more than I realized before starting to put this down. But you get the picture. The systems in Minecraft are so much deeper than people realize. Funny enough, this is exactly why Minecraft succeeded the way that it did, and has become the cornerstone that it is. At least, it plays a major role in it. In simplistic terms, Minecraft has outperformed everyone because it creates no barrier to entry and rewards the player who want more. Games that strive for unique, interesting systems often struggle at drawing in larger audiences due to possible complex button combinations and counter systems or even lack of actual tutorials. Now, if you're a regular gamer, then you probably just groaned at the term actual tutorial, because no one likes tutorials. Developers hate making tutorials and players utterly hate being stuck in them. I plan on covering tutorials in the future video, so I'm not going to focus on them too much now, but know that they can make a massive impact on a new player's ability to enjoy a game or put it down for good. When designing games, one of the big things that we talk about is giving the player a sense of progression, be it leveling up, gear upgrades, level progression, story progression, or a combination, which is typically ideal. 
Minecraft is a bit strange when it comes to progression. Yes, it does have gear progression, and I suppose in a sense it has leveling and story progression, though those last two are rather debatable and I don't particularly count them. So let's talk about the progression it does have. Gear upgrades. Though I don't really think it needs explaining, gear upgrades is when the player's tools or items they use in core gameplay loop are made stronger or more efficient at the tasks they are needing to complete. Again, self-explanatory, but I've got to show that I'm a real game designer by showing you how much time I can spend explaining obvious things in complex ways. Aside from gear progression, the only other form of progression in Minecraft is, well, it's whatever the player thinks their progression is. For some, that is surviving to have the highest gear possible, killing the three bosses, which is a level of progression in, in itself, but fits into one of the after more pension progressions, so... For others, it's building large-scale projects or surviving in hardcore for obscene amounts of time. There is such a free scale of progression that people have made servers strictly dedicated to minigames. I mean, the currently most popular Minecraft YouTuber barely even plays Minecraft in a normal sense. All this said, it isn't a bad thing. This is actually part of the reason Minecraft is such a lightning in a bottle. This is all just to say Minecraft's progress system is more of a what does the user find fun system. This is doubled down almost by the existence of creative mode, because creative mode gets rid of gear progression entirely. At that point, it's just whatever progression the user enjoys, and that's truly amazing. In the gaming industry, there are a few things that stir the pot and get people tinfoil hatted up. Is that a thing? Uh, anyway, one of those things is acquisitions. An acquisition is when one company purchases another company and makes it a subsidiary, at least in the most basic way that I can explain it. Now, this happens for thousands of reasons, be it a company floundering and is about to go under, or a company produces high quality products consistently and so a bigger company scoops them up into their big, strong, warm corporate arms. Oh god, just look at those biceps. <clears throat> um, the, this normally leads to one of three options. Nothing changes in the company's development other than better funding allocations. The company shifts management and other parts around, but it allows for better development and offers more to all parties. Or the dev company is put on a shelf like a collectible and more or less is forgot about and ends up developing mobile apps for some reason when clearly they're more than capable of great game design and god! The first two are obviously the best outcomes. The last seems to be a bit more common though. Sometimes the second option hits and results in a lot of job loss, which is also not great. One great example of companies that have been acquired is Bethesda, most recently by Microsoft, respawned by EA. Side note, EA is the worst offender of killing off companies that it consumes. EA is kind of like the glitter of dev world. It looks pretty at first, but then it stays and spreads everywhere and you can't get rid of it and then suddenly everything's glitter now. That aside, in September of 2014, Mojang was purchased by Microsoft for an astounding $2.5 billion. After this, Notch stepped down and away from Mojang. This is due to several reasons that aren't really important. Other than Notch's leaving of the company, Mojang didn't really seem to change. Other than seeming to have better funding, and updates were larger scaled but spaced out a lot more as opposed to the multiple small updates that they used to do. This is potent because Minecraft has not been the same since Microsoft took over. Minecraft is now bigger than ever, but at the time, the game started to lose its traction, and rather rapidly. Granted, this doesn't mean much for the game that was still amassing thousands of players every day, but at the time, Minecraft faded out of relevancy. But something was gonna save it. Earlier I said Minecraft is lightning in a bottle, and I truly believe that. See, every few years a game pops up seemingly out of nowhere, like Fortnite, The Witcher, The Last of Us, Halo, Skyrim, and of course, Minecraft. All these games have the form factor in common of becoming massive successes, sprouting huge followings to the point where they become almost household names. All of these have had their time to shine, and I imagine they will again soon, but 
all of them fizzled out. I mean, Fortnite and Skyrim are more of memes than anything else at this point. But Minecraft comes back again and again and again without fail. Now, there might be a game just on the horizon about to rear its head and attempt to take down the mob boss that is Minecraft, but others have tried and failed as well. But I suppose only time will tell, and I wish them luck. The repeated revival of this game is due in part to three things. Popular creator phenomenon, something that is attributed to Dream, Wilbur Soot, or Technoblade, and so many others like PewDiePie. Human's desire to create, and nostalgia. Now of course all three of these things are vital to its success, but that last one, man oh boy, that last one. Nostalgia. Now in many communities, like COD Zombies or Star Wars, really any fandom, you will find people calling out companies for nostalgia baiting, meaning that you use something that fans hold near and dear to their heart to make the audience feel like that product is amazing and rewards longtime fans. Minecraft is just ever-living nostalgia bait that could not in any way change from that. And that is okay, because man, is it so, so sweet, and everyone loves that feeling. Minecraft was and is the perfect storm. It is fun, creative, unique, and nostalgic to even those who have never visited its blocky realm. It is nostalgic because its graphics feel homely to the games of yesteryear and its mechanics are subtle, extensive, and leave the door open for endless possibilities. And the music. <sighs> The music. This is what I mean by lightning in a bottle. Just a few chords is enough to make goosebumps rise and open the floodgates to memories made, long nights spent laughing with friends, nights where it felt like the world was ending and you were able to escape into your own paradise where anything in the world was at your fingertips. It is truly a thousand memories and everyone has one that they would love to share and they are all opened with that same bottle. For me, it is impossible to look at Minecraft and not think, how in the world did this small game become so influential? It's because it is truly whatever you want and whatever you need it to be. And that is the golden ticket. Minecraft succeeds because it is a game that has no limits, no rules, and no expectations. Only the ones that you set by yourself making Minecraft a masterclass in game design, while also being the laziest piece of game design to have blown up in this culture. Don't misunderstand me, I think that the systems for Minecraft are so clever and well created that it would be insane if this game failed, and its design work is incredible, but the game design for the core principle of the game is slim to none. The game is simply designed to have someone else apply the complex features. The guys at Mojang are insanely smart and work endlessly to improve this game and it shows. Not only with the amount of love that they provide to the community, but by the amount of passion that is shown in the company and in the content that they release. Minecraft isn't going anywhere, at least not anytime soon, and that is because it is a phenomenally designed and created game. Every now and then I hop in and open a new world with a friend, or play solo even, or I'm just sitting there watching a YouTube video or talking with friends, and the song comes on, or I can almost hear it in my mind as we talk. And I feel as though I'm right at home, and the memories line the walls like pictures of loved ones. Moments that are never meant to be forgotten. And that right there is truly the majesty of Minecraft. Hey guys, I know it got a little feelsy towards the end there, but if you've made it this far, then thank you for watching. This is the first upload on the channel, and I plan to release more content just like this, where I break down games and talk about them from a design perspective, and then also give my personal anecdotes on them. If you like this type of content, then please consider subscribing and liking the video, it really helps me out. Along with that, leave a comment and suggestions of what games you'd like me to cover. Lastly, if you'd like to be featured at the start of the next video, leave a comment telling me your favorite Minecraft memory. Thank you guys so much, and don't get sucked into a toilet.